Welcome to She Right 22, and today we're looking at Jeffrey Dummer's life and the crimes he committed. Here is a little boy who may not look too different from someone you may know, but somewhere was the making of a serial killer. How could such an innocent face commit those horrid or unthinkable crimes? He violated and destroyed at least 17 boys and men from the ages of 14 to 33. Jeffrey invited them to his home where he tormented them and did things with their body. What was found in his refrigerator was disgusting and it screamed psychopath. He was nicknamed the Milwaukee Cannibal. When we hear about crimes, a lot of people wonder who is his mother and father? What happened to him as a child? What could they have done differently? Lionel Dahmer is the father of Jeffrey Dahmer. Lionel was a chemist and he is currently 86 years old. Picture here is Jeffrey, the brother David, and the mother Joyce. Joyce suffered from depression and was hooked on prescription drugs. She passed away at the age of 64. This is Jeffrey in his high school yearbook. It was the year of 1978. He would become a hard liquor drinker at the age of 14. He even took it to school. Jeffrey discovered he was gay in his early teenage years. At the age of 16, he attempted to wait in the bushes with a baseball bat and lie and wait for this particular male to jog by so he could knock him unconscious and have sexual contact with his body. However, the male didn't jog that day. Let's take a look at some people who lived in his neighborhood. This is Glenda Cleveland. She lived in the neighborhood. However, Pamela lived across the hall from Jeffrey. She was offered human flesh by Jeffrey. I say, I'm sorry. She gonna open your gift? You didn't know. Glenda Cleveland repeatedly called the police the night her daughter and niece saw a dazed boy with no clothes trying to escape from Jeffrey. In the movie, the officers return him back to Jeffrey. What the hell? Yo, hey kid, what are you doing? In May of 1991, Sandra Smith and Nicole Childers actually found the boy in the streets, not in the Oxford apartments, as the movie suggests. And that is when they called the policeman. He was holding on to me with a really, really strong grip, and he was trembling, he was shaking. So I just stayed with him, and I was like, I'm going to get you some help. When Jeffrey finally got home, he convinced Joseph and John, the cops, that Cynthia Sunphone was his boyfriend and of age. Glenda was trying to tell the cops that he was under age. However, they didn't believe her. He was only 14 years old. I'm on 25th Estate, and this is young man. He is butt naked. He has been beaten up. He is very bruised up. He can't stand. He's study fall out. He has he is butt naked. He has no clothes on. He was really hurt. And I, you know, I ain't got no court on him. I just seen him, and he needs some where's, help. Where's he at? On 25th Estate, the corner of 25th Estate. He's just on the corner at the he, street? Yeah, he in the middle of the street. He's done a lot. We trying to help him. Some people trying to help him. Okay, and he's unconscious right now? Yeah, he getting him up. He is, uh, he is bruised up. Somebody must have jumped on him and stripped him or whatever. Wait, wait, wait. You, 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 you're just going to let him take this baby back inside? Ma'am. He's telling me this is where they live. We're going to take him back inside. Uh, Y'all don't at least want to find out how old this boy is first? Ma'am, he says that's his boyfriend. We'll handle it from here. I'm really sorry about this, everybody. The policeman guided the 14-year-old back up to the apartment. After they left, he killed the boy. In real life, after seeing Connerick's photo in the newspaper, Cleveland tried to call the officers and the FBI. However, she got nowhere. The intoxicated Asian naked male. <laughs> When the truth was revealed, the cops were suspended but later reinstated. How did Dahmer get caught? On July 22, 1991, Tracy Edwards and two other men were at a bar when Jeffrey approached them and offered free beer and $100 to pose for some pictures at his apartment. Jeffrey gave two of them the wrong address and one the right address. Upon entering, Edwards noticed a foul odor. First of all, it seemed like a normal apartment. When we got inside, he turned off burglar alarms, asked him why. First, it was a foul odor, okay? Tell and us about that. What kind of an odor? It was, was just it? like an odor. I didn't quite know what it was. You know, he told me a sewer pipe had broke and management would take care of it. Yeah. And did you accept that? Yes, because I worked around at construction companies before, and when pipes bust, sewer pipes bust, they smell. Yeah. It's my God, please! 
Jeffrey had handcuffed Edwards and pulled out a weapon. Dahmer made Edward watch the Exorcist 3 movie. He also made Edwards lie down on the floor and told him that he was going to eat his heart. When the killer became distracted, this happened. Uh, I hit him I, and I ran towards the door and he like was right there, tried to grab me, get me back in there. He flagged down two police officers in Milwaukee. The officers went back to the apartment where they discovered skeletons and Polaroid pictures. Dahmer was arrested. What I did, I should be dead. This puts an end to everything. If only they would have listened to Cleveland. It would have stopped two months ahead of time. As you can see from the movie, Edwards gets away by giving Jeffrey a blow to the head. The officers were stopped by an individual who claimed he was in the apartment and became engaged in a dispute with the owner of the apartment and uh, left the apartment and called the officer. This drum was found in his room and you already know what he did with it. He gets sent to this facility. Now, Errol Lindsay's sister take the stand. My name is Rita Isbell and I'm the oldest sister of Errol Lindsay. Jer, whatever your name is, Satan. Deshaun did a great job playing this role. I'm mad. This is how you act when you are out of control. Now, I don't want to ever have to see my mother go through this again. Never, Jeffrey. Jeffrey, I hate you, motherfucker. I hate you. This is out of control. Don't fuck with me, Jeffrey. I'll kill you, goddammit. Look at me. Do you think you felt any type of remorse? Let me know in the comments if you are watching this series. I didn't ever want freedom. Frankly, I wanted death for myself. In uh, a, a carrying case in my locker at work. I wanted to keep something of, of the person with me. Jeffrey received 16 life sentences. He only got the chance to serve two years. On November 28, 1994, a guy by the name of Christopher Scarver killed Jeffrey at the Columbia Correctional Institution in Portage, Wisconsin. In the movie, they were both on cleaning duty with another guy named Jesse Anderson who had been convicted for murdering his wife. They had been left unsupervised for 20 minutes when Scarver battered Dahmer to his death with a metal bar used for prison weights. After that, Christopher killed Jesse. Scarver currently resides at the Colorado prison. He has published two books and he is schizophrenic as well. Let's take a look at him on a court day. Rain or shine. Sharing your dreams, your heart and your mind. There you have it. He said God told him to do it. He was actually already in prison for shooting his boss over $15. That concludes this video of Jeffrey Dahmer. Let's take the time out to remember the victims.